Quran says that God is a deceiver. Surah Al Imran verse 54 and Surah Al Infal verse 30 say that God is the best of deceivers. Surah Yunus verse 21 says that God is swift in deception. And Surah Al Araf verse 99 says that no one can feel secure from his deception. The Quran says that God is a conspirator. Surah Al Isra in verse 16 says that God inspires people to do immoral things so that he can then have a reason to destroy them. The Quran says that God lies to seize those who oppose him. Surah Al Araf in verses 182 and 183. And also Surah Al Qalam in verses 44 and 45 say, Those who reject our verses, we shall gradually seize them in ways when they perceive not my deception. Why then is he acting contrary to his own principle and fighting against the freedom of choice? For sure, the Creator is not intimidated by the freedom of choice He has given to His own created. Friends, it is very heartbreaking that more than a billion Muslims are following this Quran without knowing that it is speaking against the true God. Does the mighty God need deception and lies to destroy those who oppose Him? Is he so weak that he cannot approach them by speaking the truth instead of using lies and deception? It is shocking that the Quran is bringing the Supreme God down to the level of our sinners. On the other hand, God has given people the freedom of choice to accept or oppose him. The Quran says that God ordained Satan to be a seducer. Surah Al-Araf verse 16 says that Allah corrupted Satan so that he could deceive people. Is it believable that the compassionate God equips a horrible enemy to hurt humanity? Do you believe that a loving mother or father hires an enemy to destroy their child? The Quran says that Allah planned it so the evil ones could hurt Muhammad. Surah Al-An'am in verse 112 says, Likewise did we make for every messenger an enemy, evil ones among men and jinns, inspiring each other with flowery discourses by way of deception. If thy Lord has so planned, they would not have done it. So leave them and their inventions alone. A true God never cooperates with demons to hurt his beloved prophet. The true God saves from the evil ones. Since the Quran attributes the cooperation of God with demons, it cannot be from the true God. The Quran says that Allah uses demons for the spread of Islam. On one hand, the Quran in Surah Al-Araf, verse 27 says, God made the evil ones friend to those without faith. On the other hand, we saw that he planned genes to hurt his prophet Muhammad. Now the Quran in Surah Ad-Jin verses 1 to 2 says, Say, O Muhammad, it is revealed unto me that a company of the jinns gave ear, and they said, Lo, we have heard a marvelous Quran which guides unto righteousness. So we believe in it, 
and we ascribe unto our Lord no partner. The God of Islam created demons as corrupted beings to follow Satan and become friends with pagans and non-Muslims and also hurt Muhammad, but he then leads demons to give up friendship with non-Muslims and become friends with his followers for the spread of Islam. The Quran also attributes the creation of sin to God. Surah Ash-Shams in verses 7 and 8 says that God inspired sin in humankind. Surah Al-Balad in verse 4 says that God created man in toil and trouble. Surah An-Nisa verse 88, Al-Araf verse 178, and Ibrahim verse 4 all say that God leads astray. The Quran introduces God desperate to initiate immoral and lawless acts or to lead people astray and make them sinners. It introduces God like a person whose heart and mind chase sin. God is not like a human being. He hates sin and misleading acts. The words of the Quran are not only not from God, but they also do not lead to God. 